So he said, well, let's see what high, high fish oil diet does to cholesterol levels. So he assigned me to design a metabolic ward feeding study where we had three groups, you know, saturated fat, control, uh, polyunsaturated fat, and fish oil. And that's when we were doing our very high dose, you know, drink a half a cup of salmon oil every day for our volunteers. So that was the idea. He said what he wanted to know if it, how it affected cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. And that's when we discovered that it lowered triglycerides because we weren't looking for that. We were looking for cholesterol effects. But that's how I got started. So the finding, so you were, so this half a cup a day this of salmon oil, I mean, that was like, 25 grams or? Yeah, salmon oil is about 20% omega-3. So it's fairly low. As fish oils go, it's a fairly low omega-3 oil. But you know, so we had to build this one to give it all the calories, all the fat in their diet was from salmon oil. Either three salmon steaks a day plus drink the oil. No other fat in the diet. He, I mean, he went way beyond any Eskimo intake of omega-3. How long was this? One month. One month. So they were eating three salmon steaks plus the... Plus drinking ha- salmon oil. Salmon oil, which is, you know, 25 or so grams of omega-3. All together. Well, with, with oh, the oh, steak. with the steak. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 grams. And they were doing this for a month. And no other fat sources? Just... And they were, yeah, they were. They came to the metabolic board and were fed. And this wasn't a... There was no dose response. There was like just one, one, one dose. dose. And, that was, and that was it. Yeah. We backed off a bit since then. <laughs> you find that and so you, you found need. it lower triglycerides. Was it like a robust lowering of triglycerides? Well, they're, I mean, these were normal, healthy volunteers, so their average triglyceride level was 100. It went all the way down to 75. But wow. it was statistically significant. I mean, it's 25% reduction, but it's a clinically meaningless reduction in triglycerides. But it, we just weren't expecting a lowering of triglycerides. And then we, then we recruited hyperlipidemic people and did another study. And then we, we actually picked people with both uh, we call type 2B, which with Fredrickson types, you know, high triglycerides, high LDL, and a group of people that had type 1, or excuse me, type 5 hyperlipidemia, which is very high triglycerides. Um, and we treated them, and that's where we got, huge, you know, 80% drops in triglycerides. When the trig- trigs are very high, you get a big drop. And we did have, we had one patient, one normal guy who had a very big drop in platelet count, and we had to stop him from, we don't know why. And it's platelet count, not platelet aggregation. It's a different question. Mm. Um, and again, we're def- like you said, we're feeding 20 to 25 grams of omega-3, which is just out of control high. There's no way you do that today. There's no need to do that today. Um, but that's where we started, I guess you. But even at that high of a dose, most people, it was, it was, it was, Pretty, pretty safe for the month oh, yeah, yeah. for most people except for that one. Oh, yeah. They, they were, nobody had any problems tolerating it. Um, GI. And- now, is this where the origin, I mean, because you hear, for the most part, when you think about safety of omega-3, it's it seems like, you know, is there an upper tolerable intake level? I mean, people are more concerned, most concerned about the potential um you know, as they like to call it, quote, unquote, quote, blood thinning effect. And I don't know yeah. if that's accurate, but... Um, it's a reasonable know. concern, certainly from where it came from. The, the history of it back to the Eskimos, who did have long bleeding times. And there were anecdotal stories of Eskimos, you know, bleeding to death from a nose bleed, that kind of thing. Now, is that the omega-3s? Who knows what else? I mean, it's a very different environment. Um, and we did see, again... A, a reduction in platelet aggregation and an extended bleeding time. But again, like aspirin, like nobody's that scared of aspirin to a point. Ulcers, no, that's a problem. Um, but yeah, the, the, the classic belief is that there's some concern about omega-3 and bleeding. And we've tried to rebut that many times. And I've published three or four studies looking at either past literature on this question or uh, we, we did one big study where um, uh, we were doing open heart surgery on, on people, try, trying to preload them with omega-3 <clears throat> before open heart surgery. This was a Dr. Mozaferian's study, opera, opera study. And we we're trying to prevent post-op AFib by giving them a big lo- load of omega-3 ahead of time, because that was the theory at that time, that we could prevent atrial fibrillation 
in people by giving them omega-3 before surgery. And well, it didn't work, didn't make any difference. Um, but we found that even if you give people for like three or four days, 10 grams of omega-3 a day, before, before surgery, they actually, when they checked how much bleeding came on with the surgery, how much post-op bleeding was there, it was actually less post-op bleeding with the people that got the omega-3 than the placebo. Less need for transfusion, which was kind of cool. I mean, that, that is not that we would advocate it for reducing risk for bleeding, but it's not increasing risk for bleeding. Interesting. Any speculation why you think that was? Or? Yeah, I mean, we always kind of back up into this nowadays um, anti-inflammatory effect and how that, which, which is sort of a black box, because how that relates to risk for bleeding is not at all clear why they would even be related. But so we don't really know why, uh, but we, we do know that there's the concern about bleeding, even if you're taking blood thinners. It's, there's no, in the, even the FDA in their uh, package insert for Lovesa and all the omega-3s for, for Vasipa, they say uh, does not cause clinically significant bleeding. So the um, Lovesa and the Vasipa, for people that aren't aware, these are prescription um, available types of omega-3. There's a little some, some differences right. between the two, correct? Right. So. Lovesa is an EPA plus DHA ethyl ester. Uh, Vasipa is an EPA only ethyl ester. Do you know the ratio of EPA to DHA in Lovesa? It's about um, two parts EPA to one part DHA, roughly. Okay. Or three to two. So that's interesting to know that the FDA doesn't says that it doesn't increase the bleeding risk because um, I know of several physicians, and I, I think it's pretty standard practice now that when they prescribe a patient in you know anti um, something that's going to be a you know blood thinner as, as they call it, um, they say not to take yeah uh, and, fish oil as and, a precaution the, I guess. And the FDA says if you're on blood thinners, uh, you should be monitored. Well. You monitor them anyway. I mean, and you're going to take omega-3, then you should be monitored. Well, okay, fine. They're already being monitored. So there's no, there really isn't any serious, significant increased risk, as they say, in clinically significant bleeding. You might cut yourself shaving and bleed longer than you used to. Mm -hmm. But is that, are you now becoming normal? And you were abnormally, I mean, right. it's, it's, it's interesting. Just a little anecdote. My, my son was, is a doctor. He was stationed in an Air Force base in Japan, and a, one of the soldiers, one of the airmen on the base had a traffic accident, a bad one, and they had to transport the, the kid to a Japanese hospital for orthopedic surgery. And after the surgery, he threw a blood clot uh, to his lung. And so Dr. Gabe said, did they, well, was he on heparin? I mean, normally we'd put him on heparin if you're going to do major surgery to prevent blood clots. And he'd say, we never put people on heparin. The Japanese don't. Because maybe they're already anticoagulated enough with the omega-3, they don't need to do this. So it was a, a surprise. It makes me think that uh, when we say you're prolonging the bleeding time, maybe you're moving it toward normal or optimal and what's normal in America, it's like a normal cholesterol. You, nobody wants to have a normal cholesterol. Maybe you don't want to have a normal bleeding time either. Anyway, very I, good. I, very, I digress. I think very interesting point. And um, I'm sure you're, you're aware of this, but there have been some studies on omega-3 playing a preventative role in pulmonary embolisms. Like, so actually. Sure, um, sure. So, it, so that would know. play that role too, right. Yeah, right. That would suggest that they're beneficial in that regard. Um, a, a probably an even bigger variability is the variability uh, in response to taking an omega-3. So we, we look at the delta, the change in omega-3 index at different, with different dosage groups, and it can be, you know, the, on average, it's a very nice, the higher the dose, the higher the omega-3 index. But if you look at the individual splay ac across those increases, some people will, on the, on a 1,800 milligrams of EPA, DHA, they might go up from an omega-3 index of 4 to 4.3. Others might go up from 4 to 8. I mean, it's just huge variability. And we don't, we don't think it's compliance all the time. I think there's some actual, just a lot of, a, a, a lot of land to cover between your mouth and your blood.
There's a lot of reasons why maybe over the last 10 years, studies have not shown, some, some studies have not shown an effect. Partly it's low dose, partly it's background omega-3 levels are higher in the population and they haven't controlled for that. Uh, partly it's short-term treatment. I mean, it, it's, to me, it's, it, it's silly to think you can take somebody who's 65 years old and who's had a, a crappy diet their whole life and put them in an omega-3 trial, uh, give them 840 milligrams of omega-3, like one capsule of Lovesa, and expect in three years to see a difference in cardiovascular endpoints. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, so that's probably why the dose studies we'll talk about, high dose, has been effective, because you, you at least hit them with a bigger hammer. Um, but a lot of these studies, I, plus the other thing that's happened is uh, background risk for heart disease has gone down. It's just continuing to drop. We're way below what 1950s heart disease rates now. We're like a third of people die of heart disease now instead of half. Um, and so the incidence of heart disease is down. Where we have much more powerful medications that are widely used, and some of these, most of these trials had those background medications. So there are a lot of reasons why these early studies in the 90s, early 2000s may have worked, and they're not working now when the same dose is used. So that is a problem. But I think if we would, and, and to your point about measuring omega-3 in the trial, both strength and reduce it did. Uh, we did this, we did the analysis for strength at Omega Quant. Um, another lab did it in Reduce It. And I don't know if we want to get too far into Reduce It, <laughs> but the, very, the most successful Omega-3 trial in years was Reduce It with four grams of EPA. And they, they reported that the most, uh, the, the most striking, the, mo the only f risk factor they could measure or thing in the blood that they measured that would predict outcomes uh, it was better than cholesterol, better than triglycerides, was the omega-3 level. It was the omega-3 level achieved that was the strongest predictor of benefit in the reduce of trial, which makes perfect sense. Uh, so they're starting to move that way. So the reduce of trial, yeah, we, we can talk in a, a little bit. Let's get into the cardiovascular and I'll circle yeah, back. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the reduce of trial, you said it was four grams of EPA, so they were using the VSEPA? VSEPA. 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 And... Um, is this, is this the trial where there was like a 25% reduction in yeah. mortality, cardiovascular related mortality? Cardiovascular events, mortality, okay. right. It was, and was that, was that correlated with the actual omega-3 index or was that just the... It was program? correlated, that, that, that was the standard approach, placebo versus active. Okay. They saw that difference. Originally when the folks are, Glaxo, Smith Klein, took uh, Loveza, it used to be called Omicor, it took Loveza to the FDA to get it approved. Uh, their studies, they did dose response studies, and they got on triglyceride reduction. And they got good enough at four capsules a day of triglyceride reduction, so they said, let's use that. But they got better at eight grams, better triglyceride reduction. But Who's going to take eight grams a day? Who can afford it? Who's, who's going to act? There's a practical wall you kind of run into. So four grams was nothing magic. It's just what the data that was brought to the FDA to get approval for Loveza. So now everybody's kind of capped at four grams. Not because high, higher wouldn't work better. I mean, the, the ratio, I mean, the, the concept, well, we haven't got that much time. Um, it makes some sense. It's just, it's very non imprecise. Because when you say omega-3, you don't know what you're talking about, ALA, EPA, or DHA. It could be any of them. And then when you say omega-6, you don't really know, there's seven omega-6 omega fatty acids in the blood. Which ones are you talking about? And so it's, you don't know what this ratio, it's not, you can't act upon it because you don't know what you're acting upon. The other problem is you can have a, a high omega-3 intake and a high omega-6 intake or low omega-6 and a low omega-3 and have the same ratio. So that doesn't help because the problem is that you can fix a bad ratio by taking more omega-3, and that's the right way to do it. But you cannot fix it and improve your health by leaving your omega-3 intake alone and just lowering your omega-6, which that ratio 
tends for people tend to do that. They think, well, that's I got to fix it. Well, the way to fix it, there's only one way to fix it. It's a good way to fix it. It's to eat more EPA DHA. That's fine. If you want to play that ratio game and fix it that way, okay.